Hi, I'm Chelsea. I'm a professional artist and welcome to my studio tour. Today, I want to take you on a walkthrough of my current studio setup and talk about my Holy Grail studio supplies. If you're painting in a small space or don't have a dedicated room for painting yet, this is a great video for showing you how you can adapt a room you already have to maximize your productivity. Plus, I've put together a full PDF of all of these supplies, so after you've watched this video, liked, and subscribed, be sure to check out the link in the description below to get that full list. Kicking off the video today, I have my Edge Pro Gear paint book. This is the core of my studio right now, and it's a combination easel and palette that is awesome for plein air painting uh, and travel, but it is great enough that I also use it as my main easel in my studio. So down below my desk here, really my dining room table, I have a surge protector that powers replacement battery packs for the edges light, um, as well as my laptop that I have uh, next to my easel for displaying references and my phone, which I use for recording time-lapse footage. I also have an oily waste can here where I dispose of used paper towels. Um, these are really important for studio safety because we are working with materials that could technically spontaneously combust. So back up to my desktop here, I have a Mona Lisa brand tank for holding Gamsol. Um, I love this tank because the mesh grate it has at the bottom, I think cleans brushes far more effectively than the screen that's in regular turp jars. Next to that, I just have regular baby wipes for cleaning my hands as well as my brush handles. I've used art wipes before and did find them slightly more effective, but these generic baby wipes from Amazon work almost as well, and I got a huge box of them for nearly the same price as a single tub of art wipes. Then the final thing over here is a jar of oil soap for soaking my brushes that have had paint dry in them. Moving along, I have my Manfrotto Magic Arm, which I absolutely love and use for filming all of my time lapses. I've tried cheaper supports in the past, and I'm so glad I bought this, honestly. The only downside to the current setup is that with it anchored on my table, it's nearly impossible to keep it fully out of my way. Uh, either it blocks the reference, the painting, or my Gamsol tank. So I'm looking forward to having maybe a more traditional studio easel that I could clamp it to. But this is about as good as I've been able to get it. I sit here with the magic arm just off to my right. Um, occasionally grabbing a brush or cleaning it will block the frame, but I think this is about as good as I can get for now. On the topic of brushes, this is my brush holder from Geneva Fine Art Supplies, which you can learn more about over on Mark Carter's channel, Draw Makes Paint. I get asked about this everywhere I take it because it's just designed so well. I love that I can store brushes in the center when I'm not painting, but while I'm working and I need to put wet brushes out of the way, this is fantastic. It's great for maximizing small workspaces and keeping your brushes from getting paint all over your palette or your table or wherever you're working. Next up, we have Viva Paper Towels. I do not know any artist who doesn't love them. Um, they're lint-free, which is great for keeping little fibers from making their way into your painting. Then over here, I have some solvent in medium jars. Um, this is a jar of super dirty safflower oil I use for keeping my brushes from drying out if I have to end a painting session and can't clean up right away. Uh, I just dip my brush in there and then it's good for like 48 hours. If paint has dried in a brush, I simply dip that brush in a jar of Murphy's Oil Soap, leave it for 12 to 24 hours, and when I come back, all the paint will come out of it and the brush will be conditioned. Then over here, I have a traditional turp jar with actual turpentine in it. I only use this for painting outdoors since turpentine is such a toxic solvent. Um, I like the traditional turp jar for it since it travels really well without leaking. Uh, by contrast, the Mona Lisa tank, on the other hand, um, is much better for studio use only since it doesn't have the same leak proof lid. Then on top of it is just a jar of painting medium that I believe is a variation of 511 medium. It is five parts turpentine to one part galkid and one part linseed stand oil. Um, and the indoor version of this would just be to swap Gamsol in for the turp. Finally, um, in the back, I just have a little cache of brushes that I don't reach for very often. So this area I am super pleased with. Um, I actually just got this set up. I have just miscellaneous supplies in the boxes below. I have one that's for like electronics, things like camera equipment, external hard drives. Others are just more traditional art supplies. In this cube up top, 
I have all of my spare painting panels. Um, next panel is like kind of miscellaneous. These are all sketchbooks. Um, this guy um, is, I'll go ahead and just take him out. Um, this is, it's branded Scottsdale Artist School, but is a Raymar art panel, um, wet panel carrier. I think it's like a 12 inch one. Um, I actually just picked this up in Scottsdale when I was like doing a workshop out there, uh, so I could bring my paintings home. Um, so good if you're a planner painter for sure, or if you are out in a workshop traveling or something like that, um, and need to bring a painting home. Um, so all of these are Richard Schmidt color charts. You can see like just a few here. Um, moving along, I have my essential painting books. Um, I do have another um, bookshelf over my living room, which has a ton more, but these I pull out a lot. Um, and then here I just have miscellaneous supplies. So this is um, gloves in a bottle, really nice just because I don't like using gloves, but I do want to avoid having paint on my skin as much as possible. Um, and I find that this makes it a little bit easier to clean, uh, you know, get paint off easily. Um, retouch varnish, just good for being able to see paint that's matted out midway through. Um, someone in a previous video commented that there are questions about how archival that is. Um, I'm still looking into that, um, but I do still have this on hand. And I, I think for, for most artists, it's a good tool to have, especially if um, you're doing like a plein air show or something like that, where you have to go ahead and hang the piece before it's fully tried, but you want to make sure that nothing is gonna mat out. Doing retouch varnish after you're done, but before you can apply a final varnish can be awesome. Again, this is my Murphy oil soap. Awesome stuff. Just some random rubbing alcohol. Um, this is what I use for mounting linen onto ACM panels. I have some Rublev uh, lead alkyd ground. That's what I was using to prime panels before I went to linen. Galkid, safflower oil, Gamvar in the back corner, and then that large uh, bottle is actually just the same stuff as this. This is my paint kit. Um, in it, I have two essential things. This is great for avoiding that horrible toothpaste thing where someone squeezes from the middle of the tube. Um, so great for making sure you don't waste paint. And then another essential supply is having a small pair of pliers um, to open caps on your paints that have totally like cured shut and will not open. So that is my full kit. I'll do another video on like every color I own, but it's gonna be a long video. Randomly, just a little bit of varnish, Gamvar, and my varnish brush. Nothing to see here. Um, this is my tripod that I use for shooting reference, or uh, is the base for my edge if I ever like go painting plein air. And then this I think is quite genius. Um, this is a like kitchen drying rack uh, that I'm using for keeping uh, paintings while they're still wet. I hope this look into my studio and my favorite supplies has been really helpful. And if you have any Holy Grail oil painting supplies, I'm always excited to try new things. So leave me a comment down below. I'd love to try all your favorites. And as always, if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any new videos.